Welcome back to NBA Today. We had some breaking news this morning. Utah Jazz All-Star forward Lori Markkinen has signed a five-year contract renegotiation and extension that adds $220 million in new money for a total package of $238 million. The Jazz had listened on trade scenarios over recent months for Markkinen, but never were presented with an offer that caused them to seriously consider moving an All-Star forward in the prime of his career at 27 years old, sources says. Now, he cannot be traded by the Jazz until next offseason because there is a six-month trade restriction after signing an extension and six months from today is the day after the trade deadline. The Warriors were one of the serious suitors to possibly acquire Markkinen this summer. It was reported that a couple of players that they did not want to move on from were Jonathan Kaminga and Brandon Pajemski. Ramona, uh, do you think that the Warriors are making the right choices with Steph now entering a season where he's going to turn 37 years old? I do. I, I think they need to get him one more piece. They need to get him another score. But you cannot mortgage your entire future and depth to go get that player. And if you're, and it, that player has to be. And I, and I think Laurie Markin is a great player, and he would really have helped them. But there are other players out there. The Warriors are still committed to big game hunting. They just have to wait for the right time and the right place. There's a lot of situations in this league, like let's say Minnesota, where you have Carl Towns and Rudy Gobert and all these Anthony Edwards, who's Max extension is going to kick in. Those teams get very expensive. There's going to be players who will have to move because of this new this new CBA and because of the financial pressures on them. And so I think if you're the Warriors, you keep those young players and you keep all your depth together because there's going to be more opportunities. You cannot just go all in with with one player. This is this is rookie hazy, right? So I come here on my first show. I got to talk <laughs> about this Warriors offseason or this disaster of an offseason oh. that they've had right now. Disaster. Disaster of an offseason. Like you look at this Warriors dynasty and what they have done in the last few years. They've gotten those big games, the yeah. big game hunting, and they have reeled in the big fish. And now you have a situation where you whiff on Paul George, you lose Chris Paul, which means you lose Jordan Poole for nothing, right? And That's then you do deal. not get Laurie Markin. Well, you know, the, yeah, <laughs> theoretically, but you lose, you don't get yeah. Laurie Markin. And now you have a situation where you are trying to piecemeal something around Steph Curry because of the original sin of a few years ago, where you tried to build to the future while building to the present, and it has not worked. The Warriors should get on their knees and thank everybody that Steph Curry had that game four against the Boston Celtics. That is because that has saved these last few years from being a totally different narrative the way we're talking about. This has been a hard offseason. I haven't even mentioned the fact that they lost Klay Thompson, which is something that was unthinkable at the beginning of this offseason. Listen, dynasties don't last forever. You're talking about the Warriors dynasty. You're talking in past tense. The dynasty is done. It's over. It is not fair to judge this edition of Golden State based on the historic success that they've had in the past. That is in the past. They are a competitive team that got out of a record-setting luxury tax yep. bill. The, 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 a disaster is being the most expensive team in NBA history and not making the playoffs. Yep. That's a disaster. They're going to be competitive. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I do want to make a note that uh, David is friends with Stephen Curry. Well, well, we just happened. Oh. To, I just, I just happened to root for all NBA players who graduated from Davidson College. Of course, right. that's you know the one that he's like went to school graduated. with at the same yeah. time. Yeah, I just feel like there should be a little asterisk there, yeah. just so that everybody knows. Okay, so remember, Steph is eligible <laughs> to sign a one-year, sixty-two point six million dollar extension this summer with the Warriors. But in the grand scheme of things, David, the Warriors have the added depth, but no star talent. So should he, Steph, want out of Golden State? Absolutely not. With all that said, I think that Steph Curry has built his legacy one in, in Oakland. Like, he moved there from Davidson and has lived there his entire adult life. He's built so much off the court there. And part of that legacy of what he's brought there is he is one of the last players who will have his entire career with one franchise, which means a lot right now. He brought championships to there. He is synonymous with that city and with that team. I think a lot of other stars, given what has happened, may kick down that door and say, trade me somewhere else. They don't have to worry about that with Steph Curry. I mean, look, they, they started this because he is their Tim Duncan. Mm -hmm. He is their Kobe Bryant. He is their Dirk Nowitzki. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's his legacy. And he should sign the extension because it's $62.5 million. Mm -hmm. And if things ever go badly there and he wants out and they want out, it will be an amicably, amicable parting. But I don't see that happening, and he deserves – every penny and then some because he's the man who built Chase Center. Yeah, yeah listen, they're going to build a statue of this yes. man outside of the arena. If they haven't multiple, already. Yeah, multiple yeah, statues. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so there's no reason for him to want out. This is not a situation yeah. like Clay Thompson just had where he felt disrespected by the organization and, and things went sour. And look, 
again, dynasties don't last forever. The man has four championship rings. Those banners will fly forever, but he's, he's going to be on a competitive team into the twilight of his career, which Kobe Bryant was not. No. Dirk Nowitzki was not, but mm -hmm. to be the man, the face of a franchise forever, there's something and they're going to keep swinging. That. That's the, all you can ask for when you're at his. What do you think is the likelihood that he wins another championship in Golden State? Slim. Very okay. slim. Yeah. But, you know, what, you know, but it's not necessary. It's not a four-time right. champion. That's a short list. That makes sense. Breaking news from the Big Apple. The New York Knicks announced Jalen Brunson has been appointed as the team's captain, something we haven't seen from the team in six years. Brunson has led the Knicks to the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs in both of the seasons after coming from Dallas in 2022. And of course, the Nova Knicks are excited about it. Josh Hart is also very excited. He took to Twitter <laughs> to share his enthusiasm. I mean, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do to your captain, uh, tweeting just captain at Jalen. Brunson won. So with this new title, David, I'm going to start with you on this question. Does Brunson now hold the crown as the most impactful player in the Eastern Conference? I love Jalen Brunson. Congratulations on being team captain. I don't know what that entails. I don't know if you do team building exercises or whatever. But to me, the biggest play, the most important player in the Eastern Conference is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Like, it is not even close. This guy is an is MVP, defensive player of the year. This is the difference between a championship-level team and then when he's injured, being bounced in the first round. I know Dame Lillard is there, but if Giannis is not playing for this Bucks team, this is, at best, a lottery squad. I actually do think it's Brunson. And this is the guy who – this whole captain designation, I think it's a very New York thing. Derek Jeter, right, uh, captain of the Yankees. I mean, Lance uh. Thomas, who could forget him. Yeah, uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last Knicks captain. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean this is this is a very like he made a commitment to the franchise with that contract extension. He was top five MVP voting last year. Um, I, I think he is the most important because to me the Knicks he elevated his game to an MVP level status last year. He didn't win, of course, Jokic, but I had him in my top five, and I think he deserved every single vote he got because of how much he elevated the New York Knicks. This is a franchise that has not gotten to this level or sniffed those conference finals and had a realistic shot to contend since he got there. And that's something in New York. And so for them to be anything, Jalen Brunson has to be as good as he was last year. So you think he's the most impactful player in the East? Yeah, if he's not, if he's not there and he's not performing, I think they're just a middle-of-the-road team. Yeah, I, I want to know, like, is there a C on the jersey? Do they make the C in the <laughs> yeah. Knicks like a different one? But, but where? You've got the corporate logo here. you got the – They can find a place for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, this is a very Derek like, I, I want to know. <laughs> as far as being the most impactful player in the East, I'm a huge Brunson guy. Uh, I can't go there. As much as he means to the Knicks, as great as he is in terms of a star who sets the culture, I got to go with Giannis. The Greek freak is the one guy in the Eastern Conference who has proven – he can put his team on his back and carry it to a championship. Uh, you know, Brunson has yet to do that. Embiid has yet to do that. The Celtics is more about the collective than one superstar, uh, you know, carrying that franchise. So I, most impactful player is still Giannis. So you define impactful by somebody that's going to put the team on their back and win a championship. So if Brunson was able to win a championship in New York, would you say that he could possibly be in the running for it most impactful? Yeah, but can they get to the conference final first? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you put Giannis on that New York time, uh, uh, squad and take and take Brunson off. We're talking about clear-cut Eastern Conference favorites, and I think that's a determining factor.